Again. Right. Clapping. Do it. <laughs> and welcome to the Mediocre Photography Show. My name's Ben. And my name's Jack. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how we coped after university. So, uh, yeah. How have you been? What have you been up to since the last podcast, man? It's been, what, a, a month? A long time. It's been a month. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been all right. I've been up to a few bits. A few bits. I mean, I've been on one shoot. <laughs> it was a distance away, to be fair. To be fair, it was a distance away. But um, no, just um, just the one shoot. That's it. What about you? You've been just out and it. about, Dartmoor? Been yeah. out and about, went up to Dartmoor. Uh, got my Jobo all up and running now. So mm. I can do colour film and slide film as well as black and white processing all by myself, which is quite cool. All by myself, all like by a myself. big boy. <laughs> I don't want to be... <laughs> we can't say that, we get copyright guys. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so that's quite cool. So it's been quite techy and nerdy. Mm. Um, doing a shoot a... this evening for oh. uh, TED Talks. Oh, lovely. Well, which would be good. Lovely. Is that the big... It's not the big one, no. it's the launch. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we get to... The speakers the... are all going to be announced and... Is that um, where we put our work up on like little canvas boards? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm actually going to be paid to be there for once, oh, which is quite nice. Yeah. Uh, When's the big one? Are uh, you doing the, April. Are you, oh, well, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't have to do the big one yet because I'm actually on holiday until two days before. Oh. And depending on, like, I don't know what I'm doing as of Monday, let alone <laughs> no, like April. in April. Um, but what date I, is it? It, it is, always seems to be around my birthday. It's always around your birthday. It is. I should know because I, know, I yeah. got told that I should be there uh, <laughs> just last night, um, um, 16th to the 17th of April. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I don't think I'll be there. <laughs> Jack, the tickets sold out in seven minutes. Did they? Yeah. Are they good talkers then? They're amazing talkers. Sorry, you went to the speakers. Podcast? Speakers. Mm. Chatters. Chatters, yeah. <laughs> So, should we talk about the last podcast? Uh, yeah, we can Did you do. have any feedback? Did you show it to the world? Did I what? Show the last one to the world. Sort of. Did people listen? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I am not people or the world, so I don't really... You are your own entity. I am my own person. <laughs> <laughs> and barely that. But... Um, yeah, no, we obviously started the Instagram. I have slacked a little bit. Um, but I will, uh, you know, we need to do a few more of these. So I have a few more clips to put up and shit like that. So, um, but, but, first big milestone. 100 followers 100 on followers on Instagram. This is going to fuck you up in editing. It really is. <laughs> I can see it clipping. Um, but moreover, the 100 followers on Instagram, which, by the way, is actually half of the followers that I have on my personal <laughs> account. Yeah, um, I don't... I, that's, that's, yeah. I've, only got, I've only got 200. Oh. 200 PPs on Instagram. PPs. PPs. Um, we have got nine subscribers to our mm -hmm. podcast now. On and uh, the last episode is actually on, I think it hit like 50 views. It's pretty good. Which is awesome. Which is pretty good. Because yeah. there's 50 views in less than a month, technically. Mm. And the first one got 50 views. I think, well, obviously the video was up like for a lot longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so it's done no, well. It's, it's, it's taking shape. Well, I mean, if we get... It's that big leap. Yeah. You've got to take before you, yeah. Before we make it big. <laughs> <laughs> make it huge, yeah. Make it huge. Okay, well, that's interesting. But you've not had any criticism of the last podcast. People no, actually. think that they, it should be improved or... No, actually, I got a message from um, a guy on Instagram through the Instagram account saying he's loving the idea of it and he cannot wait to see more. And so... Uh, Pick up that guy. Really. Mad. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so it's... I think we can mention their name. I don't know who it is, but you can mention their name. Can I? Yeah. No, as in, do I remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll... Uh, head of social media, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will Mitchell. 
Will Mitchell. Will Mitchell. Thank you, Will Mitchell. At, at, Plymouth, Un- at Plymouth University. At Plymouth University. Um, yeah, thank you for that. We also got invited, us as a, as the the, the, as, me, the as mediocre the photo- brand. As the brand, as the mediocre <laughs> photographers. And um, we got invited to a pop up, a pop up exhibition. In, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. That uh, was what was that? that was last Co- Friday, wasn't it? It's happening tomorrow, it's as tomorrow. as of recording. Mm-hmm. So that will probably been been and gone. Yeah, because. <laughs> but it's it's really yeah. cool that we're we sort of you know getting these contacts and that's from a coverless go. That's uh, Jacob Deer. So um, pick up that guy as well. Yeah. He's um, go and follow Will and Jacob. Yeah, they pick up them. But that's really cool. That was what that might have been like a couple of days after getting the Instagram up mm. and already yeah. getting invitations already getting to. Exclusive, exclusive events. invitations to events. That's yeah. um, it's yeah, it's been mad. pretty cool. It's pretty mad. Cool. So, as we said, the title of today's episode is "How did we cope after uni?" Yeah, I think the answer is poorly. <laughs> yes, that is. Um... Well, thank you for. <laughs> well, one of, one of the... yeah, <laughs> thank you for listening. Um, one of the one of the feedback that or some of the feedback that I got from somebody who. I won't mention because he doesn't have Instagram, Um, was saying that there should be more, I don't know why, but he said that we should talk about ourselves more and we should have more of a, you know, connection with the audience. Um, And so I thought that a good way to sort of start the conversation about um, how did we cope after uni would be talking about the projects that were both working on at the moment as well the projects that started after yeah the after projects uni. that started after the university and um seeing if that uh yeah and, and you know kind of get it gets you guys to know us a little bit more but then it also shows that we are actually actually doing something doing something <laughs> as opposed to just singing working. yeah <laughs> working well i think that's going to be the answer isn't it yeah well, do you, want to, do, you want to, do you want to chat about yours? Because yours is infinitely more interesting than mine. Is it, though? Is it, though? It is. It um, really is. It's, yeah, I'm just uh, going down the family route again. I think um, it's, this one's a lot more personal to me. Um, but there's a sort of figurehead in the family who unfortunately passed away last year. And uh, it's had a tremendous effect on the family. And it's sort of the first big loss of the family. And so, um, photographing like family meetups and family gets togethers and stuff like that, and sort of photographing the, the the sort of grief and recovery of the family, plus also sort of looking at his life uh, because he had quite an interesting life. He was in the RAF and then he was in the Falklands. He then joined the police. You know, you know all these interesting bits and. Um, Bits I didn't realise until his funeral. And so, um, yeah, I'll be looking at that, doing the usual Jack style of uh, distant and, <laughs> and lonely. But, um, yeah, no, that's um, that's sort of... that's Yeah, I don't that's really want to say any more because I'm quite secretive about this sort of deal. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, people... Well, actually, well, to be I completely fair, hop on the idea. <laughs> I mean, there's that and there's also... Yeah, maybe we could add this to the list of things to talk about. We have encountered a little bit of plagiarism, haven't we, since the last episode? Yeah. What we were talking about the other day. Mm. Don't know how that's going to add into the show, but maybe That'll we be can... in a very special episode on yeah. copyright. <laughs> we should that's... talk about copyright. I've mentioned this, like, multiple times. Yeah. We should talk about copyright. But it, it, yeah, it was a, yeah, quite a dull lecture, but... Yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, I was. (laughs) I was too busy crying over a dissertation. (laughs) Anyway, so that's my um, Are you going to tell us the title? No. Because I like titles like I like... like your women? (laughs) (laughs) Secret Secret. and (laughs) non-existent. No, I... Yeah. I've got a couple of titles, but one's sticking in my brain. But I, I will, I will let everyone know someday when I'm 
old old and grey <laughs> yeah but um, no that's 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 what I'm doing I've currently that's done cool. one shoot which is is not enough but um, no there's a couple of family get togethers I think coming up and so um, and also going abroad with uh, my nan so that should be make for some photos and uh, yeah so it's it's on the move but um, yeah what about you? not anything hard and fast which is exactly how I like my women (laughs) you could have said that not whilst I was drinking (laughs) Um, my approach to photography has always been take work take, take photos and try and almost put the project together afterwards if that makes sense like i'll go and i'll do research and i'll have this idea and then i'll take the photos and then the project will change completely and more often not becomes a lot more autobiographical than i was initially intending yeah um thank you lecturers no it's fine (laughs) lecturers if you're listening i really appreciate it um the work that i'm doing at the moment is deliberately autobiographical And it's Mm. deliberately selfish work. And it is me effectively trying to find why I fell in love with photography in the first place again. And trying to explore different avenues within my photography and just see what comes out. And it's very technical orientated. So like I said, I've invested a lot of time into really nerding out on color film processing, Mm. slide film processing, and really getting to grips with black and white again. And, you know, really, really, really going to town on that. But then it's also shooting on different formats, shooting on different people as well. Mm. Like as a documentary landscape photographer, people, very rarely appear in my work but I've been going out and when I was in first year I was very much like you know approaching people almost street portraiture style and it's something that I very much love doing but my practice changed very quickly from that so it's getting back into that as well um it is being published at the moment but again the way that I'm publishing it is that I'm not doing it in any kind of rhyme or reason It is literally when I feel like putting something up, I will put something up and there's no sequence to it. There's nothing like that. I think that I might do something with it a little bit more serious towards the end of the year. But at the moment, that's effectively what I've got. Um, And I will tell you the title because, like I say, it's being published, (laughs) unlike some people. Um, title of mine is called the uh the humble misadventures of the lost photographer which i think is quite a uh nice I, fitting i title. agree with that title yeah it gets the jack henderson the ti- seal title of appro- seal of approval which uh, is always very important yes always I'm, very important. i am the title guy you are the title guy but no i'll tell you what that is, not being published oh well it is being published it's, it's well, obviously going up on your Instagram self published it? yeah. yeah it's not you know is, is also that's sort of feeds into um, after uni you're not having these you know having to get yeah. work done you can you can make your work whatever you want it's interesting and it's a challenge mm and when you're at university and you have deadlines and you have a effectively a quota whether that be self-imposed or imposed by others you have to meet that and that means that you know and it's different for different people it's different for different projects but for me personally i was out once probably mostly twice a week up on Dartmoor photographing. What, at uni? At uni. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Now it's more like once every two weeks if I'm lucky. Yeah. Again, we're recording this in February. The weather is against me at this time it's of year as well. It's so absolutely fucking shocking. It, honestly, <laughs> like, it's just terrible. But, you know... Fuck you, Dennis. Yeah, fuck you, Dennis. <laughs> uh, the last year, 
even when the weather was bad, I would still be going out and photographing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And coming home after being fall after falling in a marsh and <laughs> absolutely stinking the house out. Um, but yeah, there's less pressure, but that also means that there's. It's all self motivated. It's self motivated, and when you're working full time, it's difficult to self motivate sometimes. Yeah, because you come home and you're like shattered. Yeah, and you're there like, and yeah, you're like I don't want to go out. Now. Yeah, you have weekends, and weekends are for catching up, catching up with sleep, <laughs> hanging out, you know, seeing your friends. Actually, yeah, having a social keeping your life. sanity, keeping yeah, <laughs> staying sane. And as much as photography has always been this mechanism to um, relax and mm. a mechanism for me to recharge and rewind, it is also a very mentally and for what I do as well, physically draining mm. thing to do. Yeah. You know, getting up at ridiculous hours with 10, 12 kilograms of gear on your back, having to drive to Dartmoor to do a long walk to take photos and, and then to drive home. And then to drive home again. And then you've got all of the other stuff as well, which is developing it, scanning it, editing it, mm. you know, collating it, potentially even printing it, mm. you know, and, and doing the editing process on it as well. It does take a lot of um a lot of motivation. Mm. Yeah. You've got to be in the right the right frame of mind as well because yeah uh with your project as well i think you've got to if you want to get the right atmosphere and the right sort of style for me you've got to be in the right frame of mind which mm. you, i can't ever be in that frame of mind after working yeah and then having going home and being like i'm just too tired to mm. move and so it is yeah it is it is difficult but it, yeah you've got to sort of that's the thing you've got that's the thing they didn't teach you uni was how self-motivated you have to be mm. to sort of just get up do the work you sort of got to like act like you're still in uni to yeah. get the work done yeah you need to be disciplined yeah and but the other thing is that there are i was expecting to come out of university and be like right that's it you know let's smash through another project it's actually been really really nice that i haven't yeah. Like three years is a long time to just be doing to project just be doing on project, project on project. After project. Yeah. And as much as I do dearly miss it, which I do, oh, I um, yeah. it's nice that I can go out and do it at my own pace and at my own leisure. Yeah. However, as we said, that does run the risk of it being lazy mm. and going from there. And when, when we talk about frames of minds, shooting less frequently, I think that photos generally are better for me because my mind is more clear yeah i i tend to um because i'm again i'm not self-motivated like everyone and so i'll take a roll of i'll be really motivated for like a week i'll do that week of shooting i'll go up to the places do the week of shooting really enjoy it really love it get back do one day of sort of getting all my gear ready getting all my gear sorted and stuff like that and then i'm done Mm. I won't I won't go I won't develop the film and so I I tend to forget what photos I've taken which I don't know whether it means that they're better photos because I'll look back at them and go oh actually that's crap I've got to like redo this entire bit and so therefore like you're just improving or you just forget about the images and they're actually good images and you go oh, I really don't think they're very good <laughs> but yeah it's it's all about yeah self-motivation and yeah the grind. What do you want to do after, like, long term? Long term? Long term. Bloody hell. Um, carry on making projects, obviously. Um, in terms of this project, because this project is, is going to be fairly long term. I'm thinking, maybe like, two, three years before, and it's probably, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, the project that gets me into a master's. Okay, let me... Okay, I'm, I'm going to try to rephrase that. Rephrase um, that, please. Why did you do your degree? <laughs> um, what, do you want the honest story? Okay, fine, I'll rephrase <laughs> it. Because you, you know the you question I'm trying you... to ask, don't you? 
what what's what's in store for Jack Bevan Henderson? What's in store for Jack Bevan Henderson? What you know? You, no, Bevan. 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 <laughs> ben. <laughs> Jack. Bevan Henderson. Um, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. Like, what what's what's in store for you? How do you want to see yourself as a photographer? As do a, you want to be a photographer? Yeah, definitely. I've done three years of degree work. I, of course, I do. And um, you know, I want to sort. Of, I want to see. I see myself working a part-time job alongside that because I see no other way. I see no other way for a photographer to be a photographer mm-hmm. unless it's commercial. Uh, oh, keep talking. I'm going to do the camera. Oh, do the camera. Um, yeah, I see no other way for a photographer to be a photographer. Um, what was I saying? God, it is difficult out here on your own. Um, for a photographer to be a photographer, yeah, because you need to you need to fund it. You need to supply that project with money, and so. Um, yeah, you know, probably finding a good, well-paid part-time job to fund my travels. Look, there's, it's you've sat down, and I'm talking again. I'm talking properly again. It's really weird. It's isn't it? really weird. Do you know what my theory is? I was thinking about this that when we're sat here yeah. on the same level, we're talking to each other. But, uh, but yeah, as soon yeah. as I stand over there, I'm now talking to an audience. So we're not. Yeah, it's not a very big in big audience, but it's a very important audience though. <laughs> But no, I yeah don't see it any other way apart from a part time job, and again it's like and producing work in a fine art aspect or producing oh, work God, in yeah. a commercial aspect, fine art all the way, editorial. That would also be pretty cool if someone looked at my style and went, oh, you know what, I could see that in my magazine, an advert for a table or a bedside cabinet or a mug, and then. I sort of make work in that style. That would I would love to do that. In my style, though. Yeah. Because I don't think I'm I'm the type of person that I don't enjoy. Other <laughs> I don't enjoy other people's work, but I can I see things how I see them, mm. and I don't see them any other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can see that. But apart from that, that, if I get that lucky, it will just be a part time job, and and I hate to say it, but photography hobby oh, it's gutting because mm. i paid so many so much money <laughs> but um no yeah i think that's um yeah five years ben bullman Where's phd P- oh. sorry Dr. Oh, it's ben on Bull- record now Do- isn't it dr Fuck ben me. bullman <laughs> i have to go ahead and do it now yeah i want to teach um and as with the Jack Bevan Henderson way, sorry, Jack Bevan Henderson way. That's right. Um, I can see myself teaching alongside being a photographer, mm. but I think unlike you, I enjoy teaching just as much as I right. enjoy photography. So you wouldn't mind if one took over another, or I think that they are. Very they work, much, yeah, they work hand in hand. They, they work hand in hand and they mm-hmm. are very much interlinked in, in a lot of ways. And I'm not talking like, oh yeah, I'm going to be really inspired by my students to go out and make lo- lots of work. Like my work will still be my own work. But when you're teaching in that field, you have a network around you. Excuse me. Excuse you. Um, <laughs> I love stink. how you had to go away. From yeah, I know. I was, I was like, oh, I cracked my finger. No. <laughs> um yeah you you exist inside this network of other fine art photographers because let's be honest most of them end up being teachers and um that's sort of where i can imagine myself being um in five years what level higher oh so uni uni, uni, yeah Yeah. i would like to you know i i would i wouldn't be upset if I ended up teaching it further and A levels and stuff like that, but Oh at college, yeah. Yeah. I would prefer to do higher. Yeah. And that's why I because want to Because you've got a lot more focused students then. Yeah, you've got more focused students, he says, generally speaking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. Um But you know, you, you 
it doesn't I think we're both very aware that it doesn't come on a silver platter no you have to work not. hard and whether that be having to slog through master's degree after master's degree after mm. MRes after PGC after PhD yeah or working at can I say where you work no. Work, work Working, stacking, stacking shelves. A waitrose. <laughs> a waitrose. Um, for... But I, I promise I'm not posh. <laughs> um, My middle name is Bevan. Fancy as fuck. Fancy as fuck. <laughs> no, but what you were saying about um, uh, having to be driven and sort of motivated to sort of get to that position after, after uni, coming back to that, is... You're, I, I don't know, I just... And about, like, taking a break? Because you've done three years, you sort of just want to not do anything. But a lot of people, they are obviously driven to do teaching, PhDs, all this stuff. But you, you've got to remember that most of... Well, most of the people... I say most of the people. A lot of the people in our course were older. But you've got to remember that a lot of us are really young. <laughs> like, what, you're 20, 28. Did you nearly say 20... How old am I? 28? <laughs> Oh yeah, you're 23. That's right. <laughs> but you know, you still, we're like early 20s. We've got still got like 50 years to live, at least. <laughs> <laughs> if we're unlucky. Um... <laughs> but no, you've got to remember that you're still young. And I always aim for. I think. When did Alex Soth get Sleeping by the Mississippi? How old was he when he got published Sleeping by the Mississippi? I'm gonna Google it. He is one that I always not look to, what's the word? Not copy, but sort of. He's your, um, he, he's your goal. Yeah. His timeline is your goal for your timeline. Yeah. So yeah. I think he got it published later on. I'm just having a look. But um, first published in 2004. How old is Alex Soth? Alec. That's really... 2004? It's an old book. And he's 51. Right, so he would have been in his 40s then. Yeah. So that and that, that was the one that sort of did it for him, wasn't it? That blew him up massively. Yeah. And so I, I, I think that everybody worries about sort of making it early. <laughs> what have you... Oh, that's... I... Uh... Oh, sorry, that... Uh, okay, hang on. I'm going <laughs> offline, otherwise this is going to be an absolute bitch to edit. Should I just start to just carry on talking? Just keep talking. Um, Alex Soth, Alex Soth, Alex Soth, Alex Soth, <laughs> Alex Soth. No, um, he's sort of one I aim for, um, because obviously, yeah, as we've just said, that he was in his 40s when he first published Sleeping by the Mississippi. I think that's, yeah, everybody sort of strives to make it early, but... Um, you're still sat there, and I'm really struggling to talk. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be so loud. <laughs> okay, it's fine. We'll just leave that there. But no, that's what I aim for is, you know, you don't have to make it early, make it big early, if you know what I mean. Do you think that what you're currently doing is achieving that? Well, you could, that, he was 40 and sleeping by the Mississippi. You know, you can, you can afford to take breaks, is what I'm saying. <laughs> 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 that is not the lesson that no. you should get from that. The lesson that you should get from that is work very hard and be patient. Be patient, yeah. No, that's a, yeah. Not wait. let's take a <laughs> ten year break. Yeah, I know. I'm a very demotivated person. But as I was saying, it's it's three years of work, and you just want to take a break. But these projects, they won't come around again. In in my case, or like your mindset won't come around again in the way that you want to find out how why you love photography mm. Th these mindsets won't come around again and so if you do just leave it I guess you'll miss out on these um, projects but Alex Oath Alex Oath we want guests on this show yeah Alex Oath's never coming on this show oh, no. I don't think I think I'd just sit here and just not talk I think isn't that what you do anyway do, do you know uh, do, have you watched <laughs> that was actually a little bit of feedback that we got from the last one was it yeah my mum was like Jack doesn't talk yeah much. my mum was like Jack's very quiet hi Jill um 
Do you, have you seen that uh, episode? Do you watch? Have you seen? You've seen Community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the bit where uh, Troy meets his like his this TV star that he's always wanted to meet, and he only wanted a picture of him as a gift, mm. and so instead he got given the actual actor, <laughs> and so as soon as the actor comes into the room, <laughs> Troy, <laughs> he just sits there like that. And then he just starts crying. <laughs> he was just there like, I only wanted a picture. I only wanted a picture. That's what I'd be like if Alex Hoth was a guest on this show. <laughs> He's so... I'd be sat there, starstruck. <laughs> I don't of, have anything else to add to little that. little bit of a tangent. A little bit of a tangent. Yeah. Do you think the university did everything putting aside the mode self motivation because you know that's not something that any course can teach you <laughs> there probably is courses on self motivation oh yeah but they're probably <laughs> bullshit and they're probably and run, run by, by hippies <laughs> yeah exactly Nothing um, against hippies, but though. you know from a university thing to putting the self motivation thing aside because that's based it, on personalities it's it? based on personality and it is not something that a university course should teach you <laughs> Do you think that university gave you the tools that you needed in order to cope after university as a fine art photographer? Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't made it yet. <laughs> no, I think. Um... But you can you can make an informed decision on whether or not they did enough. Oh yeah, I think. Well, I. Uh... Our lecturers were fantastic and they continue to be fantastic even when we're because I know that we can just email them and they'll be there like okay let's mm. you know sit down and have a talk so I think they've yeah I think in our personal experience they have done enough and you do you think they've done enough I think that the lecturers as individuals and the course as a whole are two very different things. Fair point. And just because a lecturer will be there to say, oh yeah, actually, you know, you can still come and rock up and have a chat Have to a us. coffee. Which I have done a couple of times, actually. Poked my head through the staff room door when I've been down in Plymouth and said hello. hello. Um, but They've all ignored you, but... <laughs> yeah, they have, actually. <laughs> Yeah, they were like, oh, God, not this guy oh, again. Oh, God, he's back. Yeah. I thought we got ben! rid of you. Yeah. Um, but I think that the course could have done better for the immediate, you know, uh, opportunity, shall we say, that oh, you right. get out of the degree. So, um, and again, this varies course to course. So I'm very appreciative of this, but imagine if you had, well, as we were, I mean, we won't mention her name, but as we were talking about before the show, somebody who got work at the box, which is the museum in mm. the university. Imagine how good that would have, that would be if that was a networking opportunity that came from the uni itself. You know, yeah. it's not what you know, it's who you know. We all know that. Yeah. But I think that that's one of the things that I would like to have seen improved is that networking element and that element of... In terms of fine art, because I know there was there was commercial opportunities that they offered, but maybe more fine art options. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like internships and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's difficult in the Southwest because there isn't a huge amount floating about, but people Everything are willing to travel. Everything goes through Bristol. <laughs> But yeah, but people are willing to travel. Mm. I mean, if somebody turned around to me and like, oh, Ben, would, um, you can... Okay, maybe not me because teaching is a bit of a different career. But if they t someone turned around to you and said, oh, Jack, there's this archiving job in Ooh. London. Oh, fuck yeah. Exactly. You would travel for that. Oh, I couldn't afford it. Yeah, archivists don't get paid anything. But um, Actually, they get paid quite a lot, do they? archivists. Yeah, they do, and but you do need a qualification to do it, which is also a lot of money. Fine, I've got white gloves. <laughs> yeah, white gloves and a duster. Yes. But yeah, um, that's what I would 
Yeah, I, I think, yeah. Say, because it gives that person the immediate gratification. And again, for the less motivated individual as well. Yeah. The, and again, this is a difficult thing because you have to work hard for what you get. Mm. Again, that's no secret. But if you look at the vast majority of people that have come off the course, how many of them are doing things like what we're doing here? How many people are actively going out and taking photos and still publishing? How many people have got work in the industry already? I don't know. I don't talk much, according to you, Mum. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I, I never I should have mentioned what, that, should I? <laughs> I, see what, I see what you mean. No, I've got a complete grudge against her now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> No, um, yeah, I, I do see what you mean with the, um, especially... If... Because at the end of the day, where it's an opportunity, it's not an, an, an opportunity and opportunities for internships in any area, any field, are still going to be sought after and are oh, still going to be competitive. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are ones out there, but the difference is that we don't know about it. No, because we are tucked up neatly in the southwest. Exactly. <laughs> So that would be my sort of only uh, comment behind that. And so I think, you know, a solution, because I don't, I wouldn't know where to start looking. More in terms of like internships for, if we're talking internships for like a a bigger photographer, like a a known photographer. Well, I mean, I know the Martin Parr Foundation often have internships come up, but they're only three months and they're unpaid. And also, they go pretty fucking quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. because that is the only real yeah. sort of place in the southwest where you can... Mm. I don't know. And I think that it's, it's a real shame that in fine art photography, a lot of it is that we have to make our own luck. Like what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. You know, just sitting down and talking about photography and trying to create a... Almost something. <laughs> a commu- well, I guess for what is a better word, and I hate the phrase, but it is community, isn't it? Of people that are like-minded who would want to uh, have this as a platform to discuss things. Mm. Because, there, you know, there's nothing else like this podcast out there. No. Not yet. But, you know, maybe, well, that's, maybe some, now we should talk uh, about plagiarism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's probably some of, like, better photographers. But this is but that's the, the most the mediocre out there. This is the most <laughs> mediocre show. Oh, by the way, the battery on the camera is critical. It's going to die at any oh, second. Oh, for God's sake. This is why... Notice how the audio has been perfect. Oh, psh. Well, apart from me, like, smashing up my microphone, but that's... You know. <laughs> Actually, you were put, you put the stand down as well, so this is your fault well, too. Well, to be fair, I did leave it, you know, your whole setup open for, you know, your own... Interpretation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> open for your own interpretation, yeah. But, um, yeah, at least it's not the SD card now. At least it's not the SD We've card, because we're out. using my SD card. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah. Did you just want to do both bits? I think from the future, I will just <laughs> be doing both bits. I'll just sit here. Well, this is probably a good talk. little segue to talk about what's happening with me. What's happening with you? I'm moving house. I mean, and when were you going to tell me? <laughs> Jack's literally been helping me with boxes for the last two, <laughs> like, hour. Literally. Um, yeah, I'm moving house. So the next podcast, we are going to continue doing it. The next podcast is going to be a oh, little yeah, bit different. Oh, yeah, we've got different. all the kit now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The next podcast is going to be a little bit different. Um, we're going to work out a way. It's going to be, fucking... it's going to be, going to be really so, difficult. So oh, Basically, okay. the plan is this, that we are going to be recording ourselves in our respective... Just, just imagine, like, this setup. For all the... Just split in two. Yeah, <laughs> literally. You've um, got to stay on, on their right. Yeah. Their no, left. their left. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the next one's going to look a little bit different and it might take a little bit longer <laughs> to come out than a month. I remember when we were thinking about this, you said, oh, we should do one every week. No chance. You I know, wish I could go back in time and slap myself. You know what? That <laughs> is such a stupid remark. You know what our catchphrase is? What our catchphrase should be anyway. What? New shows every sometimes. <laughs> every sometimes. Yeah, it's literally just, well... 
It was about a month ago, wasn't it? Maybe it was month exactly a month ago. What is every oh. month? Every month. Yeah, so That'd we've got good. the next month to try and yeah. sort this out. Yeah. But because now now we've got to record two sets of video, two sets of audio. And then you and need then to send you've them got to, to edit. And I've got to <laughs> And then I don't know, I didn't volunteer that's, to that's edit. Gonna be, that's going to be the hardest bit is me sending them. Ah, oh, it's Google Drive it. No, I mean like me. <laughs> if I can <laughs> Oh, fuck's sake, why am I, I promise I'm not lazy. I'm just not demo- demotivated. Is just another word for lazy, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. Just another word for lazy. Anyway, but no, anyway. Um, that's happening, isn't it? That is happening. So yeah, like I say, Sad. next episode is going to be a bit different, but we'll make it work. Edi- editor, put in some like um, "Hello Darkness, My Old Friend" or something. I, we'll get copyright. <laughs> oh, hello, <laughs> editor. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> um, I'm. I think we should get back on track mm, little and talk about what i would argue was a bit of an elephant in the room should we talk about uh sean davy we can do you have no idea where this is going do nope. you nope very good work though very good work i like sean um, davy we'll definitely be emailing her to see if we can get some, some photos, photos up in it. yeah definitely because that'll be awesome yes um but Sean is a fine art photographer, absolutely in- incredible portrait and documentary photographer. Some of the most beautiful work to have ever come out of the Southwest, in my opinion. Oh, and, easily, and that's saying something. Easily. And Sean, like a lot of fine art photographers, uh, can't afford to do it full time. And so she works as a commercial wedding photographer in her basically to make ends meet right yeah i still have no idea where this is going in your opinion what do we think about how university helped us prepare for and the reason that i took sean as an example was because the majority not the majority but there is a large portion of fine art photographers that do that you know, most um, of them, yeah. Most I'd of them, say. if you look at Rob, he does a lot of uh, Rob Darch, uh, by the way. Um, I'll ask him to put some work up as well. Yeah. Uh, Rob Darch recently featured in the British Journal of Photography. <laughs> so don't clap. Yeah. <laughs> Editor, put clapping in. <laughs> um, oh my God, look at this spike. Yeah, I know. I know. Anyway. I can see the spike. Don't worry, it'll disappear in a second. <laughs> oh, not yet. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, Rob works for, he, he does editorial he stuff does as well, and, 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 and that, bits and pieces. How do you think university prepared us for that? What, the splitting of? The likelihood that one would have to be a commercial photographer of some sort in order to support the fine art photography. Um, I think we were definitely told about it from like day one. I think we weren't expecting to just do three years and then all of a sudden ta-da you're a fine art photographer i was oh you were told that <laughs> yeah 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 oh, damn you must I, have been I'm, something special I'm, that. <laughs> I'm you must have missed that meeting it was, I, it was exclusive you weren't invited <laughs> probably not um probably just didn't turn off. <laughs> This this episode is gonna make me sound so fucking lazy <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm, not that that? Lazy. I'm not saying anything <laughs> i'm not um, i promise um no, I think we were definitely told it wasn't just going to appear on Silver Plough. Um, but I think we, it was in second year and third year more, it was, I felt it was more one way or another. You were sort of, you were taught the commercial side of it and you, you were told to go on jobs and write reports on them. And did I didn't. <laughs> No, you just... I did a magazine. You did. I was the like, Banished oh. Journal of Photography. Yes, it's, it's exclusively episode... Or edition one. Edition zero, actually. Oh, was it? Oh. Yeah. But, um... No, yeah, you were told to do... You had, obviously, your commercial module, and then you had your fine art modules, and I felt that there wasn't really a... a, a binding of them both. Of how to, like... I don't know what the word is. Where you like, not split, but you, you're like half and half. You sort of 
Does dovetail the word? Or is that a, like dovetail? What's a dove? <laughs> What's a dove? No, no, <laughs> dovetail. As in, like, is that a cooking term? Is that a cooking term? Well, you dovetail. You you've got to do like two different things whilst you're cooking. You've got to like beat an egg and <laughs> it's like the Guggenheim hunt all over again. <laughs> <Yeah, it is. laughs> do you not know what I'm talking about? You know, an egg. Just <laughs> no, and I I don't think getting back on track. <laughs> I don't think we weren't told how to do two different things at once or like sort of split the workload or mm. we were told one thing and then that was separate from the other but we were definitely told about it we weren't taught how to dovetail how to cook an egg i'm googling it dovetail <laughs> dovetailing i'm sure it's a thing and while jack's googling this i think it's time to introduce our sponsor google google <laughs> <laughs> dovetail Joined together by means of a dovetail. Fit. I thought or... it was a carpentry term. I don't know. Dovetail joint is probably what you're thinking of. Dovetailing tasks. There you go. It says, what does dovetailing tasks mean? And then it says dovetail. A dovetail is a joint in woodworking. <laughs> oh, they fit easily and work well together. That's a dovetail. Yeah. Bit like us then. Right, your plan, and then the example is your plan to dress up as a Jedi Knight dovetails well with your brother's Darth Vader's costume, for example. Has so they weren't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we weren't told how to do both at the same time. We were told we were taught, you know, mm. commercial fine yeah. art. Yeah, which I think is a shame because I think that is how a lot of people would have been able to support their businesses and go from there. But there, you know, there are other things to do to work in the industry. Like, um, you know, I work in the industry. Yeah. It's just not photography. The closest that I get to photography well, on no, a day-to-day do, basis you... is taking passport photos. You can make something out of that. Make something out of that. Out Ben's of project. Passport photo no, euporium. No, that's a shit title. <laughs> um, shit title. Of but I was also lucky. I don't know. To get the job. To get the job. Were you lucky though? I made my own luck. You were pretty tech, you know. I'm a fucking nerd is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're, you're also, you know, to an extent you're working in the industry, yes. But you are also learning, you know, I know you do the, the courses at said business. Camera retailer, which we're not going to mention because no. reasons. Um, <laughs> But you do you do the teaching of the courses, which you know is the good bit, mm. as I've heard. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether you got lucky because you knew what you were doing. But this is the thing: I made my own luck, and my career at said shop, said industry, um, has definitely um, improved my at least my technical ability of photography mm. um and you know it's the skills that i learned there which if i w- wasn't working there i wouldn't know how to do any of this no do you, um, you got the job after you joined the course didn't you very quickly after yeah um, so you, oh, you obviously did photography or join the course didn't you because then you know would you have been accepted on the course? Probably not. No, I probably would have been accepted on the course. I they accepted anyone. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was accepted. Yeah, exactly. And that's the low standard. Yes, absolutely. I am the lowest of the low. But that's for a different episode. Yeah, that is definitely for a different <laughs> episode. So yeah, I think that that could be another thing that we need to talk about is you know marrying commercial and fine art photography and the benefits or the cons of doing so mm. are we talking about that now we've got 10 minutes i've got a couple of ideas go on then first of all this is my personal opinion right this is going to be god help us it's <laughs> probably racist <laughs> it's not racist i don't think um <laughs> is that i am out and out a fine art photographer i 
Oh, so it's not racist, it's pretentious. Good. No, no. Well, I'm not a photographer at all, actually, because anybody can, can be a photographer now. Um, is that I think I, me getting taught it separately, as in you're getting taught commercial photography and you're getting taught the creative stuff, actually. No, I guess commercial photography can be creative. Uh, the fine art stuff meant that I sort of separated them and so I wanted to do fine art over commercial and mm -hmm. I think if they were you know m married then I would dovetailed. have dovetailed if you were taught to like dovetail them and sort of do them at the same time I maybe would have been like oh you know what I could maybe do commercial photography but instead I was you know I oh, what's the word Pretty much, course. I liked fine art photography more mm. than I liked commercial photography. So I put a bit more. Oh, again, it's going to start making me sound lazy. Why are you doing this? I put more effort <laughs> effort into the fine art side of it than the commercial side of it. I have a question if for you. If you get what I mean. Oh, great. Define fine art photography. God help us. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> um. Uh. Well, let me Google it. <laughs> No, no, no. I want, I want to know your definition between what is a fine art photography right. and commercial photography. Because I would argue that they can be one and the same. They can be one and the same, yes. And I would argue that the majority of cases they are one and the same. Yes. Because you're thinking about the money, aren't you? Yes. If it's paid for, it's technically commercial. If you're paid to do it, but what I'm because I haven't hit those dizzying heights yet, or ever. <laughs> I think that my sort of view of it is that fine art photography isn't paid at all because I haven't actually. And I know, I know, people get paid for it. You know, look at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> look at name, name like you know, people buy books and they buy this and that and I just think, yeah, in my eyes, it's it's still, it's still only, it's non-paid fine art photography because I haven't been paid for it. But it's, but you know it's not. I know it's not. So. But in my eyes, like now, I can, well, me personally, I'm not paid for my fine art photography, am I? Okay, I'm gonna, um, I want to give you a scenario and right. I want you to tell me whether or not it's fine art or commercial photography. Oh God, all right. I've been approached by a, I don't know, a dance clothing company. Nice. And they have turned around and they said, oh yeah, we really like your work, we really like your style. We want you to uh, do some photos of our load of dancers in, this um using my this company's dancing clothes uh for our advertising that's the brief you have complete free reign you can use whatever dances you like you can do it inside you can do it outside you can do it studio you can do it this and that and the other but the dancing company has given you complete trust in as long as there are dancers and they're wearing your clothes or they're wearing their clothes <laughs> <laughs> that would be a wish <laughs> Right. It is going to be from there. Oh, and by the way, it's paid. Commercial or fine art. That sounds like a nice job. Yeah, it's a nice job. Commercial or fine art. Ah! Job. Actually, photographers are jobs, isn't it? But, like, it, I don't know. That See, that is both. I know. I know it's both. But... But? My, my silly brain can't... That sounds commercial to me. Okay. Because someone has told you so now, me as a photographer right. is going out to take photos of dancers right. in whichever situation I like, yeah. and I can do it inside and outside, and I have complete free reign of right. the entire job. Okay. What's it now? It's fine art. Because you, the fir at first you said the company came to you. But the photos are exactly the same. The only difference in the photos... Is that you're not paid. Is that I'm not paid, and they're wearing an item of clothing. I'd still go the second one, fine art. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. 
What if I then published those photos, made a book out of it, and that sold really well? Still fun up. Because it's off your own back. The company has come to you. Okay, what about if I approached a company and said, and I said, want to do I, this for I you, want to take... and they said yes? Commercial. <laughs> because the company's involved. If someone in, in like a higher power <laughs> is involved... I th- oh man, I don't know because then you go wedding. Oh, you know what about wedding photography? And you go, oh well. Nice. That's exactly my next uh, point. Yeah, I I know, but I don't know because I haven't been paid for my fine artwork. I don't do much commercial work or any at all, and so I don't know the difference yet. But again, I'm going back to my early early point. I'm still young. <laughs> You know, 17 is... is... You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you were 17. Oh, yeah. But no, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Shall I wrap up? Are we just ending it with that? Yeah. Do you have any tips? Me acting like an idiot for like five minutes. <laughs> Mate, you've been acting like an idiot for, for the last, last 56. <laughs> um... I'm surprised the camera's still going. I haven't heard it turn off, but I kind of assume it has. Yes. Um, shall we... Do you have any tips? Tips for what? For a third-year photography student who is about to graduate and is about to go into the big, scary, big, wide world. Anything you would do differently? What Anything would, you did what? right? Oh, man. Things I'd do differently. God. Another degree. <laughs> <laughs> no! No, um, I would, I think I'd definitely push my own work more. I think the, the, the amount of people I run into and they're there like, oh, you need to push your work to every single corner of, you know, every single, yeah, every single corner of the country, you know. I think I'd do that more. I think, I, well, I'd do that to start because that, that, not only will people then be looking at your work that are not just your family and your friends and your pe- peers at uni, but um, yeah, I think that'd be the main thing. It, it's the it's the industry and the people, mm. other people seeing your work. Yeah. Apart from that, have fun. <laughs> and, yeah. And I mean, good luck. That's the advice that I'll give. Stay motivated. Stay on oh, target. Oh yeah. Try and stay Star Wars reference. Um, Wait, what? Stay on target. Oh, yeah. Stay on target. <laughs> um, yeah, stay motivated. Don't expect anything from anyone. Oh. Nobody owes you anything. No. If you want to make it, you need to make your own luck. And also, you, you don't owe do anybody. anybody. You don't owe anybody anything either. No, and you can... I know that this is going to make me sound even worse, but if you don't want to sort of do something... This is like a life lesson. You can say, you can say, no, I don't want to do that. I wish I said no to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, as in like ideas and like pushing stuff and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. but no, push, push your work definitely. I think that that is. I I have nightmares about how little I pushed my last project, mm. and now the thing is that you you move on. The networks are dried up. Yeah. And, you know. So. Yeah. Hmm. Any other any other tips? Are we just literally just saying, <laughs> push your work and stay motivated? Push your work and stay motivated. And. And. Keep learning. Do the internships. <laughs> Wait, what? Do the internships. Do the internships and... Uh, Everything's an experience, and you're still young. And, and you're still young. And, and university was a waste of 40 grand. No, it wasn't. <laughs> the friends you met and the experiences you had and the people saying, no, that's a rubbish photo, Jack. And, <laughs> oh, this is getting personal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave it before Jack goes on a rampage. I thought it was a good photo. <laughs> <laughs> Follow yeah. us on Instagram. Yes. Uh, am what's I going? Might you can go first. We should. Well, what's what's the you know the show that we're currently doing? Oh, uh, what's that Instagram called? At the m- mediocre photo. <laughs> <Don't look at laughs> me. I'll Google it. 
<laughs> Follow the mediocre photo. If you liked it, subscribe. If you didn't like it, tell us why. Oh, Follow please. me on Instagram, Ben Bowman photo. Oh, and me at Jack Henderson photo. Bye. <laughs> we really need a different sign off. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> Go on, mention it. I've got really sweaty armpits. Say it louder. I've got really sweaty armpits! Yes. <laughs> <laughs>